guest Tony Barber's heard that tune about 10,000 times. It's so nice to welcome you to the show tonight, Tony, and say congratulations on the happiness you have found which you richly deserve. Good evening to you, Tony. Hi, Philip. Um, um, and good evening to you too and your listeners and to Simon as well. Well, I was saying to you, we watched uh, A Current Affair last night and the story was really warm and fuzzy that uh, having lost your beloved Helen to cancer in the not-so-distant past, uh, you found true love again and you might like to share the story with us tonight. Yeah, well, it's um, it's been a remarkable, uh, remarkable thing. Um, Helen, of course... I'm married 39, going on 40 years, and um, uh, she was diagnosed with um, pancreatic cancer in uh, 2007, and uh, we had three, um, I want to say uh, three great years, funnily enough, because um, something happens uh, under these circumstances that in a strange sort of way makes you closer than ever you have been. Mm -hmm. There's an overriding um, there's an overriding cloud to it all because you know it's going to end. But, but uh, it, makes you, it makes you cherish each moment more. Well, I guess. it does. And uh, but you also know that, it, that it's that it's going to end, and, and, it, and it's a tough time. And I, you know, um, Helen was just. She was fantastic. Philip knows she was. She was my. Uh, uh, she was my right career arm. She. She was. Funnily enough, not really anything to do with the business, but she came into it and she learned very quickly. She had an accountancy background, and um, uh, she. She kept me very centred, very grounded, and um, uh, when this when this tragedy overtook us she was fabulous you know she uh, it's a bit of a byword you know people uh, i don't even like the expression you know the fight against cancer mm. uh, it, it's an awful fight because um, uh, much and much of the time you you're up against it you know it's a so it's a, it's a hard fight but she was brave and she was bright and she was just lovely and, and I um, tended to have to be that way with her because she inspired me you know, it's just strange you know I was the healthy one but she she dragged me through it and um, I was I was good you know practically all the time but I did have towards the end a couple of months ago I did have a bad day one day and I said I said to my beloved you know I said look I said, I, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I meant, you know, well, what am I going to do without you? And uh, quite philosophically, she said, well, you'll do what you, you'll do what you've always done. You'll get on with it. And in a in a strange sort of way, it stayed with me for the for the few months that she had left, and we got through all that. And then it stayed with me into this newfound. Uh, widow, widower, widowerhood, and uh, I'd had that, uh, you know, I had this time of caring, and, and now was it was caring for me. And I was all set to um, jump on a boat and, and go somewhere for months and just be sad and drink quietly, and then and it just kept coming back to me, get on with it. Anyway, Richard and Jean Pratt, for whom I'd had five, six fabulous years as entertainment director and resident compere and working with the company and everything uh, up until the time Helen got sick um, uh, there was a big function from for the um, Australian American Association um, at the Crown as a tribute to Richard the late Richard Pratt then and the family and I was invited and it was the first invitation I'd had since the bereavement and it said you know uh, you're invited Tony Barber and a partner, you're invited, you know. And I, it's the sort of thing that Helen and I used to uh, love going to, you know, sort of evening, a special night. And I just could I wanted to go, but I couldn't bear the thought of going alone. Anyway, now here's where um, uh, Kirsty comes into the picture. Kirsty and Russ Glenn. Russell Glenn was uh, selected along with me and 36 other boys to go to the Royal Australian Naval College in 1954. 
who went in as 13 year olds and we were a thick group we always you know we we stuck the ones that became naval officers the one that went the ones that went on to other things people like john hamilton uh, the writer and journalist yes. um and uh, when the you know the careers were over or the people had left the navy and so i did and so forth we still had the reunions we met so we were all buddies especially the melbourne group and russ and kirsty glenn were a part of this group so russ and kirsty and helen and tony were good mates we yes. went to each other's place for dinner and we spent time together anyway russ very sadly after a wonderful career he he left the navy as a, uh, uh, you know, after a glorious career as a commander, uh, engineering, and started uh, one of the first IT companies, uh, which he eventually sold to IBM. Uh, and Russ, um, out of the blue, you know, in the early 2000s, um, was diagnosed with um, brain cancer, and uh, he, uh, he was for two or three years. He fought through it, and we used to go swimming and. You know, we were still all friends and we stuck together. And, of course, when Helen got sick, Kirsty was there with the other wives in the group and people helping and so forth. Anyway, cut a long story short, let's get back to the big night with the, with the Pratt's the, at the uh, casino. And uh, I just didn't want to go alone. I thought, well, well Kirsty knows how to handle these sort of occasions. She won't feel uncomfortable and it'll be a, a sort of a handbag, as it were, for me. And she might enjoy the night anyway. So we went. And uh, you know, it was great. We had a wonderful time, and there was a there was a moment when all of a sudden, you know, I'm holding her hand and we're walking around the dance floor, and I suddenly thought, "Geez, I'm I'm on a date." You know, it was uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. this is uh, this is different. We're not mm. chums anymore. We're mm. not pals. Mm. And all right, we're we're in our uh, well, in her case, uh, late sixties, and my case, almost seventy. Yes, and. Um, but hell, you know, it doesn't matter. We could have been teenagers. Yes. And we had a lunch to follow a couple of weeks later and things, you know. And it, would, it just seemed like the most logical and very perfect um, combination, which which we both agreed, both of our late partners would have also agreed with. And so... Uh, we married at the end of uh, last year, yes. and we're living down here on the Mornington Peninsula, and we're very, very happy, and uh, Kissy's uh, family are uh, they're good breeders. <laughs> they have five children, and uh, mm. now I've got uh, 17, 18 step-grandchildren. Oh, that's what and, <laughs> and we saw you on the on the farm, on the, on the yeah. tractor, and uh, you're very much at peace, and uh, uh, all, all that's happened here, it's really been heaven sent, hasn't it? It has. It's, it's, just, it's just been special. And uh, um, I just think now, I do a lot of corporate work, and I do, uh, um, I do speaking engagements and so forth. It's become a bit of my theme, apart from talking about life and television. Yes. I talk about, you know, what a, um, what a very good thing it is to be in your 70s and how, you know, we, we lot should be very proud of ourselves. We've, we've had to accommodate more change in less time than any other group in the history of the world. Mm. And by and large, we do it mm. and we kick on. And, and that's what you've got to do, I think. Mm. You have to, you have to stay with life. Yes, you do. And, you... and I keep, I always keep thinking of what mm. I want to get on with it. Yeah, you're very good at reinventing yourself. Uh, and let me tell you this, uh, not because it's in memory of her, but your late wife, Helen, was one of the loveliest people I have known in my whole life. Yeah, mm. she was. And, and can I tell you this? Uh, if you were to meet it, I'm sure you will eventually, and I'm sure you'll agree um, Kirstie's uh, uh, dropped out of the same stamp. Yeah, sure. Well, well, you're very lucky to have found each other. And I have a yeah. feeling that I might have met her at the last night of Channel 9. I think you might have introduced oh, me to right. her. Oh, that's right. The big send-off. Right? Yes, yeah. you were there with her. That might that's have been right. one of your first yeah. outings. But uh, I was charmed by her that night. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to talk to you tonight, um, not only because I'm so 
happy for you in your new uh, situation but also we've been mates since the late 1960s thanks to the, the Grundy organisation and you'll always be a big part of my life Tony Barber. Oh we've been through a lot Phil and you guys have been good over the years too I've always enjoyed you and, and talking to you and um uh, everybody, you know, at AW. Yes, yeah, so, well, we're always here for you in the future, and and, and you might. Actually, I think Simon's my Facebook friend. Yeah. Yes, that that is correct. Oh, we right. are Facebook That's friends. Yes. And, and you know something else, and this has probably never crossed your mind, but talk to Kisty about this. You would make a wonderful, and it's not too late in life to start. You'd make a wonderful marriage celebrant. Oh yeah, really? No, I, was, I was talking to Greg Evans about that the other day. Yeah. <laughs> He's already taken that step, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to stay away from the priesthood, Phil, especially uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, I understand why. Are you still doing the cash grab on Foxtel? No, 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 that's uh, that's long gone. Okay, well, well no, mate... I just do the odd corporate gig and um, and keep the keep the grass nice around here for the alpacas. Oh, right, well, take care of yourself, and uh, we look forward to catching up with Kisty again in the future, and may you both live happily ever after. Thanks, Phil. God bless. Good talking to you. And, Cheers, Simon. And Tony, I, I just wanted to say, because it's hard to get a word in with Phil, uh, I, I just wanted to say, I didn't get to see the story on A Current Affair last night, but hearing you tell it the way you have was just just a beautiful thing. And I, I, you, you must be very happy to have been so lucky after such tragedy for the two of you to, to find love again like this. Well, uh, I mean... Uh, you, it can happen, but I think you've got to be relatively open to it. You've got to, as Helen said, <laughs> you've got to get on with it. And you're out there and you're doing things. That there's, there's people for, for everybody. Yeah. Good on you, Tony. I think the other thing, we've got 80 years marriage between us. So <laughs> we're good at it. Why would you waste that? <laughs> all, all that practice. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't be the experience. Good night, mate.